Hello everyone, my name is Nabil Tariq and I'm a technical consulting engineer with Cisco Tax and Team. Welcome to my multi-part video series entitled Configure MDS 9000 Single Switch Fabric Zoning. In part one, we will cover the configuration steps for zoning in basic mode on a brand new single switch fabric using port worldwide names known as PWWNs. This video is split into two sections, with section 1 covering the minimum prerequisites for zoning, followed by section 2 covering the configuration steps for zoning in basic mode using PEWWNs. Section 1. Zoning Prerequisites The diagram shows a typical redundant single switch fabric setup, with two physically separate paths and A and C and B represented by the two MDS 9148V fabric switches. Because it's a single switch fabric, the term fabric and the switch can be used interchangeably. On the left hand side, you can see a physical server hosting two virtual hosts. And on the right hand side, you have your storage array connected to redundant controllers that are dual homed to both fabrics. From the server side, all the host HBA0 are connected to FC1 slash 1 on fabric A and HBA1 to FC1 slash 1 on fabric B. From the storage side, controller 1 ports are connected to FC1 slash 2 on both fabrics and controller 2 ports are connected to FC1 slash 3 on both fabrics. The respective PWWNs of the devices are also shown on the switch side interfaces FC1 slash 1 to FC1 slash 3 respectively. To better understand the upcoming configuration section of the video, I suggest you take a snapshot of the above diagram and view it side by side while going through the remainder of the video. Now let us move into the switch configuration. This particular model is a 9148V fabric switch running version 932A. First we will move into the global configuration mode using the command configure terminal. Notice how I use the tab key to auto complete the command. Next, we will enable endport ID virtualization known as NPIV to allow for multiple logins on an F port by using the command feature NPIV. To verify, use show feature pipe include NPIV. Notice how I use the pipe command to filter the output. To see the complete output, run the command without piping. Now let's create our vSend and assign interfaces using the commands vSend database and then vSEN 100 to create vSEN 100, followed by vSEN 100 interface FC1 slash 1 dash 3 to move the interfaces to vSEN 100. To verify, use show vSEN 100 and show vSEN 100 membership. Next, make sure that your selected ports have the licenses acquired. Go into the interface configuration mode using the command interface FC1 slash 1 dash 3, shut down the ports, followed by port dash license acquire to license the ports, then no shutdown to bring the ports back online. To verify, use show port dash license pipe head and show interface FC1 slash 1 dash 3 brief. Please note that this step is optional in case of MDS 9700 line cards and some expansion modules for our fabric switches that include factory installed licenses that are not transferable. Now before moving into the zoning configuration, verify that the end devices have successfully logged into the fabric using the commands show floggy database vSAN 100 and show FCNS database vSAN 100. At this stage, the fabric is ready for zoning. Section 2. Configure zoning in basic mode using PWWNs. Now typically all initiators will be zoned with all the target ports. However, additional zoning may be required as per your deployed solution and your business requirements. Now let's create single initiator and single target zones as per Cisco's recommendation. This means for each virtual host, we will need at least two zones, one for each controller port. We will start with creating a zone for virtual host 1 and controller 1 by using the command zone name vh1 ct1 vsan100, where vh1 ct1 is the name of the zone with vh1 representing virtual host 1 and ct1 representing controller 1. It is recommended to name the zones appropriately to help identify what they represent. 
Once the zone has been created, we will add the PWNs of virtual host one and controller one as members of this zone by using the command member PWN for virtual host one, three, 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 zero, 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 ending with five, two. Member PWN for controller one, two, 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 zero, 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 ending with zero, six. Now let's create another zone for virtual host one and controller two. Notice how I use the up arrow key to avoid retapping the repetitive commands and modify them as needed. Zone name VH1 CT2 B100. Member PWN for virtual host one ending with 52. Member PWN for controller two ending with 07. In a similar fashion, let's create zones for virtual host two. Zone name VH2 CT1 V100. Member PWN for virtual host 2 ending with 53. Member PWN for controller 1 ending with 06. Zone name VH2 CT2 V100. Member PWN for virtual host 2 ending with 53. Member PWN for controller 2 ending with 07. The next step is to group the zones together into a zone set. This can be done with these commands. Zone set name san a v san 100, where san a is the name of the zone set. Member vh1 ct1. This command adds zone vh1 ct1 as member of zone set san a. Let's add the remaining zones to the zone set as below. Member vh1 ct2. Member vh2 ct1. Member VH2 CT2. Once you have added all the zones to the zone set, make sure to activate the zone set using the command zone set activate name san a v san 100. And there you go, the zoning configuration is complete. The next step is to verify the zoning configuration. You can do this with these commands show zone status v san 100. This command shows you the various zoning parameters, including the last known zoning status for vSAN 100. You can also use the command show run zone vSAN 100. This command will display the running configuration for both active and full database. Finally, use the command show zone set active vSAN 100 to see the current active zone set. The static pointer shows that the device is currently logged in with the respective FC ID as shown. The square brackets identifies the zoning method used, which in this case is PWWN. Once you are satisfied with the changes, save the configuration using the command copy running config startup config. To summarize, below are the steps required to perform zoning in basic mode using port worldwide name on a brand new single switch fabric. Step 1. Enable feature NPIV to allow for multiple logins on an F port. Step 2. Create vSAN and assign interfaces to that respective vSAN. Step 3. If needed, ensure that the ports are licensed, not applicable for some platforms. Step 4. Ensure that the ports are online and the devices have logged into the fabric. Step 5. Create zones and use PWWNs to add devices as members of these zones. Step 6. Create a zone set and add respective zones as members of that zone set. Step 7. Make sure to activate the zone set and verify the changes. Step 8. Once you are satisfied, save your configuration. And finally, step 9. Repeat the same steps for the redundant fabric. I hope this information has been useful for you and thank you for watching.